shared my screen opinion about how we can successfully maneuver in these turbulent times. Um, this is what I, I try to say here is it's a, it's a discussion paper. So I would not like to pretend that we know exactly um, what's going to be in the future, but uh, we try to best uh, to get prepared what's uh, going to happen in the coming weeks, months and, and years in front of us. So that's why we did a lot of um, uh, scenario a building in the, the past couple of weeks. I would like to show some of them. And uh, what I think it's more important and interesting is what's the impact on the different industries, uh, what we believe the impact in terms of liquidity and profitability is going to be in the coming um, uh, years. And of course, uh, what's the implication in our region, in especially I, I have a quick summary about uh, uh, the measures in, in Hungary. And afterwards, uh, a few words about what managers should do and uh, executives should do uh, in order to get uh, a proper handling uh, with the potential upside of this crisis. So let's uh, jump into the into the presentation. Um, as I as I mentioned before briefly, we've been drawing a lot of scenarios for weeks now. And um, there are three basic scenarios which we call uh, like that, uh, the fast recovery, the, um, uh, the delayed cure, and uh, the sad profound recession. Um, there are a lot of sub sub version of these scenarios. Uh, currently, we believe we stay in this delayed cure version um, where um, the infections um, are globally uh, spread and uh, not just in Asia, China, but also in Europe and, and, uh, and US um, and other continents are significantly uh, involved in this uh, pandemic. And um, there is a lot of effort to stop and mitigate uh, the impact uh, with uh, lockdowns, shutdowns, and uh, total hibernation in several fields of the uh, economy. How long uh, is going to be? four weeks, six weeks, months. It depends on a lot of factors, a lot of uh, KPIs, uh, but currently we hope for this uh, delayed cure scenarios and try to avoid uh, uh, the third one, which is uh, a long lasting uh, recovery process uh, with some major and non-recoveryable element as well. Um, but um, all behind this, scenarios, uh, there are uh, three uh, uh, critical elements what we see here, and it may be a little bit more visible uh, to understand what are the scenarios uh, uh, built up. Uh, this discussion is always about the curve, the curve of the shape, and, um, and the curve shape can be V, U, and L, and uh, this is basically a uh, uh, the fast recovery, the delayed recovery, and uh, the persistent loss of very long-lasting impact of the crisis. Uh, what are the differences? And, and we can play around the time and uh, the size of the, the impact. Um, we all agree on that the, the impact um, in these Western countries and also in, in Europe is the uh, end of Q1 and, and beginning of Q2. There is a very sharp and immediate uh, 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 volume drop um, due to the, the downturn and, and lockdown um, measures. Um, this is everywhere the same couple of uh, weeks, uh, days or weeks, the, uh, the difference. Um, it has a huge impact on Q2. Uh, the question is whether it's going to be a, a, a quick up in the fast recovery scenarios uh, we see the economic activity picks up very quickly and uh, stabilizes afterwards. And, uh, and basically by uh, end of Q2, Q3, the ramp up is possible and in Q4, we are already back to, let's say, normal business. Um, in the dealer recovery, we see a different model. Um, the full ramp up can be achievable by end of the year, beginning of, of next year and the economic, uh, economic stability can be uh, achieved uh, the next year at Q1. Uh, like in the 
Similar in the, the L-shaped curve, we have a very quick drop at the beginning, but afterwards it's not a, a weaker pickup or a delayed but steady growth, but a, a very long lasting step-by-step uh, -step, uh, um, uh, growth, which is not because of the recovery, but the normal economic uh, uh, build, um, which uh, basically uh, means a permanent loss. Um, what we currently do day by day is, is uh, uh, working on projects, talking to uh, clients in a lot of industry. We try to adjust our algorithm to to be able to model where we stay in this in this uh, curve and uh, what are the different scenarios uh, we are heading to. But I said it's different in in sectors and and in industries. And, and I believe that we have to distinguish not just talking about the global economy and the global macroeconomic, but, but deep dive into some of the, the sectors. And uh, um, we see already uh, major differences between, between sectors and, and industries. And um, on, on, this, on, on this spectrum, we can identify uh, uh, very severe uh, impact on some industries like like tourism or medium or much more questionable impact like like pharma and and meditech uh, uh, sector but let's let's go step uh, one by one and and i think it's a very interesting uh, um, analysis which we can talk for hours uh, for each sector but i just would like to highlight uh, some of the elements here because uh, the crisis has two impacts. The first is an immediate uh, short-term liquidity impact. So all of the cash flow suddenly disappeared due to the, the lockdowns or, or interactions of the typical economic actors. On the other hand, there is a profitability impact, which is not immediate the day one, but uh, catching up and accumulate by the end of the year uh, creating a significant uh, uh, impact on the EBITDA or the profitability of the companies. Um, we all agree that that one of the, the key industries uh, suffered the most uh, in this crisis is uh, travel, tourism, uh, airlines, uh, where we see uh, short-term uh, immediate cancellations of all of the, the bookings, um, also some needs for reimbursement. Uh, uh, means actual uh, cash out um, and of course there is no new bookings everybody is waiting so it, it's a double impact on these industries um, there are some new and immediate measures to minimize the cost uh, granted uh, aircraft you see all over the news these shocking pictures about hundreds of airplanes on the on the ground uh, but still uh, these airplanes uh, should be financed these are long-term uh, leasing and it's um, that's no exit options um, here. This is uh, immediate impact and uh, uh, a lot of cash flow uh, on the negative side and and significant uh, uh, reducement in the in inbound side. Um, on the long run, these two industries will suffer as well the the loss of uh, trust in 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 traveling. Uh, we can believe that uh, the summer vacation period will be totally different. Um, all of the players counting uh, 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 non-existing amount of uh, bookings for this uh, summer. There were a lot of bookings already ahead. Uh, the, the cancellations for the summer period is arriving as well. Um, and uh, uh, maybe the second half here or the last quarter there will be some uh, cash in and uh, and positive impact on these industries um the other industry here maybe uh, let's let's jump to the retail um not including the the fast moving uh, products like 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 food uh, which is still should be available everywhere but there are also some cost elements uh, uh, getting more uh, and an increase on price due to the difficulties in transport and logistics and other measures, um, extra cleaning of all of the the, the shops. Um, but on the other hand, the, the slow-moving um, uh, consumer goods 
it's uh, it's going to be delayed purchases um, uh, or just not existing purchasings at all uh, and in the long run and the profitability will suffer as well oil and gas um, the 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 benzene and, and diesel and of course the crude oil it's a very hard situation right now uh, the demand is just disappeared um, and uh, all of the players used to play around with a very um, uh, specific and scientific modeling of the demand supply management and getting the right the right impact on the price it's ended up immediately in weeks in a in a price war uh, the russians and the saudis uh, playing it pretty pretty hard and and of course still the global tendency of decarbonization uh, uh, has a as a negative background of the whole current situation as well. So we see that the, the current um, uh, oil price, uh, the profitability has just disappeared, and it's going to be no signs currently which sees an increase um, price uh, development here. So it's going to be this year a very tough year for the sector as well. On the other hand, if we if we see the, the the other industries like logistic, constructions, and and engineering, um, uh, we see here also a lot of lock positions, but no immediate huge uh, cash out. Um, there are some uh, needs still existing, projects ongoing, a lot of projects uh, uh, prolonged or delayed, N not really starting new projects, but uh, some examples still exist. Nevertheless. Um, these industries suffer a lot uh, on, um, on, uh, because of the heavy cost, cost structure and a lot of uh, cancellation, shortage of available uh, workforce, uh, uh, no traveling, it's a cost, uh, cost country activities. It's, it's, uh, it's very difficult to, uh, pro uh, to provide the necessary workers on the constructions for example automotive industry it's a very interesting case we all heard about the immediate news after a couple of weeks the the shut shutdown and and uh, and stopping the production uh, this is one element the second element is of course starting from china one of the biggest growing markets for the automotive sector it's uh, i think by 40 percent in the first uh, quarter uh, basically significant uh, drop in demand and um, it's globally is going to have a huge impact on this sector um, nevertheless these OEMs the auto auto manufacturers it's a relative good position in terms of cash so not really a huge cash problem but definitely a very critical problem on the profitability side on the other hand um, they uh, still can manage uh, this uh, uh, demand decrease um, due to their huge size and, and stabilization effort. Uh, the suppliers, the tier one, tier two, tier three suppliers um, working on definitely on a just-in-time manner will have a huge uh, difficulties managing these times. Um, one positive impact on, on, on the old hope for the automotive sector is China. As I said, it's, uh, it's one of the, the most important markets. It's already in the recovery, so it can compensate the decrease of, of other geographical areas. And then let's move to the, the upper part of this chart. It's, uh, it's uh, not positive. It's still it's, uh, a, a negative uh, story what we are talking. So we shouldn't forget that in every sector, in every part of the economy, it's going to be difficult, painful. It's just the question, the, the question is only how difficult and how painful it's going to be. Um, we see that uh, in, in uh, the financial sector, um, there, there is a huge pressure uh, due to the low interest rate and uh, some of the monetary policies provide financial aid to the people, but also uh, relies on the support of the financial sector players. Um, and uh, we face a lot of um, uh, distressed companies, a lot of uh, bankruptcies, um, which can um, lead uh, to significant uh, cash flow um, uh, problems. 
a lot of uh, governments announced moratorium on loan payments um, and uh, some of them introduced also special taxation of the of the healthy uh, banks uh, which can uh, influence significantly their profitability um, this year um, utilities uh, the electricity and other utility companies um, no immediate cash problems nevertheless they will uh, face also the the bankruptcies and the paying difficulties and it's going to have an impact on the uh, on the cash flow positions uh, profitability it's uh, it's a critical element a uh, uh, lot of shutdowns and uh, economical uh, performance uh, uh, limitations will have an impact of the uh, size of the sector which has a negative impact on profitability as well and um, last but not least uh, the pharma and medi tech industries it's um, it's a very mixed picture within this sector as well some of the companies pretty strong um, and uh, they cannot even meet the demand that's the problem some other companies is it just uh, due to the fear and the uh, governmental or authority restrictions they are not able to operate uh, so this will have an impact on their profitability definitely in the coming weeks months and year um, this this uh, provides us a, a, a broad overview of the sectors it's very difficult to judge what's going to happen but um, be sure that uh, the world after COVID will not be the same. Um, currently, there is a uh, there are a lot of hypotheses. Um, uh, we can see some some potential that from the very global and globalization efforts which happened in the last 20 years globally in the world economics is going to be significantly reassessed, reevaluated, and some of the measures will focus on uh, localization how to ensure how to provide some backup uh, some options for the future uh, even in a long-lasting crisis or the next crisis when heat should be a backup option so the the global production networks uh, shall be enhanced with some uh, localized production um, try to shorten the, the supply chain, uh, the, the value chain should be uh, closed in, in geographies. Um, local warehouses and reserve strategies will emerge and this all will cause a kind of uh, price increase because these are additional elements uh, will provide uh, more cost on the, uh, on the company's expenditures. This means that, that also not the step-by-step -step and continuous efficiency increase going to be the more, more focus, but radical new solutions and try to switch other operating models to increase the improvement. Um, uh, basically, what we believe here that going to be definitely a re-evaluation and efforts to move uh, and to judge um, that these solutions can provide extra risk mitigation for the companies. Um, but not that the companies, the government did uh, their homework in the last couple of weeks. Um, and due to our conference now focusing on this, uh, uh, our region, uh, it's interesting to see that, uh, that although we are one of the central, uh, one homogeneous region called Central Eastern European region, but still there is a huge difference between uh, the countries. Uh, we put together this page last week uh, based on some uh, pre-Eastern uh, status of the economic stimulus packages and we can see there is a huge difference between countries. Uh, for example, Poland uh, uh, announced almost a 50 billion euro uh, package. Also some special elements for, for small or mid-sized businesses. Um, but uh, uh, this is uh, just about 6% of, of Poland's GDP. Um, they calculate right now or they plan to have uh, around 3% uh, GDP decrease. Slovenia, it's a small country, 
um, the same size in terms of GDP uh, stimulus package. It's about 3 billion euro uh, for companies and, and individuals. And they are also focusing on supporting people with very low income. Although the, the different scenarios up to 16% shrinkage of the economy could happen according to their uh, uh, plans. Uh, Croatia uh, uh, issued a um, relatively large stimulus project, 16% of the GDP, almost 10 billion uh, uh, euro, and um, also try to support here also the, the small or low income uh, segments of the population. Uh, Czech Republic uh, focusing on, on financial instruments managing the, the crisis, and introduced, like Hungary, a debt moratorium and interest-free uh, loans. Uh, and also the package, the stimulus package, uh, reaching 18% of the, of the GDP. Slovakia, a, a small country, uh, a large package is expected, but still we don't know exactly the details, or at last week we, we didn't get the information. The parliament adopted it 8th of April. Um, almost 10% uh, shrinkage predicted in this country for this year. In Hungary, we have uh, a long uh, uh, relationship with, uh, with uh, debts. Uh, the, ten, uh, the, the financial crisis 10 years ago um, uh, taught a, a huge lesson uh, due to the euro uh, loans. So immediate uh, uh, measure of the government was a debt moratorium on individuals and, and businesses until end of the year. And um, the package, the stimulus package, I'm going to give you uh, some details after that. Uh, almost 20% of the GDP altogether, 30 billion uh, USD. Uh, Romania uh, introduced also a package uh, and financial uh, instrument as well, uh, also dedicated small companies and, uh, and uh, uh, fo focusing on small companies and, and, and SMEs. Um, um, in uh, in uh, let's, let's, let's move on um, um, about uh, uh, Hungary. I, I just missing the charts. I'm going to provide you maybe later. It, it's not in this deck, it's another deck. Let's, let's move on. Uh, what's, what's the critical element on, on, on decision makers facing with all this crisis day to day? Uh, because it's not just the, the, the company itself, but the decision makers facing huge and, uh, and large uh, 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 questions nowadays, uh, significantly um, uh, reduce the, the room for maneuver, and decisions should be uh, made on immediate. Uh, uh, production levels, shutdowns, uh, uh, inventory buildup, supply chain ramp up, uh, employees policies and benefits, headcount uh, changes, uh, uh, capital expenditures, uh, uh, long-term investment, cash management, and uh, uh, these are the daily job, uh, which all of these questions currently in a huge uncertainty, and nobody is able to answer that right now with uh, with huge uh, uh, security. Um, definitely the, the top priority of all of these questions, how can I limit the spread of COVID-19? How I can ensure that all of my people working safe and, 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 uh, and can be um, in, a, in a closed room and proximity? Um, when will be a, a green light? How I can provide the green light if we want to reopen, re-ramp again? But, but the long-lasting impact of, of the current situation on tourism, on business, on retails, on sales, this is an enormous uh, question, uh, which has no really a good answer that. And of course, the ultimate question, when the market is going to be recovered, um, this is a, a critical element as well. Um, implications, uh, as I said, uh, it's going to be painful and very tough. So under any scenarios, uh, we believe all companies will need to take uh, tough measures and, and uh, have a grip to manage the, the crisis. 
uh, very focused. Um, the, the severity of these uh, tactical measures deployed will be dependent on the company's exact uh, financial position. Many companies entered to this, to this financial crisis more stressed, higher credit loan uh, than they had it uh, 10 years ago. And what is a very difficult uh, uh, situation right now is this globalization effect. Um, the, the world uh, globalized even more than it was 10 years ago. And this interconnectedness of the economy could produce a domino effect. Um, and uh, if only a couple of sectors or segments suffering, it will have an impact on the whole economy and globally. The impact will be felt by everybody. Uh, not a single person could oversight uh, the impact of this COVID global pandemic. Um, overall, uh, the company should face strategic decisions and after very critical self-assessment should decide which side um, they should consider the coming weeks and months. Uh, the distrust and, um, and companies suffer a lot will cut definitely investment, hard projects and, and face uh, uh, HR uh, decisions. But there will be some companies who feel um, still in a leading position in terms of the role of handling this crisis, uh, playing um, in their sector, uh, centralized position could emerge stronger their position. And this impact and also uh, some force in M&A activities, it will define two strategies. One is the, for the distressed, it's more a defensive uh, restructuring uh, strategy, um, how to face with the creditors, how to improve efficiency, uh, reduce costs, try to uh, find new uh, revenue streams. On the other hand, some of the stronger balance sheet companies can consider some offensive, more market-driven uh, approaches and also leading a kind of cons uh, uh, consolidation and have a role in the build-up of the economy. So, um, as a top priorities, what we need to focus on, um, we have the top six priorities um, for executives, um, uh, which is a kind of summary of what I, what I told in a couple of uh, minutes ago. First, ensure health and, uh, and, uh, and prosperity of the, of the staff and the people and uh, uh, check up all the vulnerabilities and problem fields and try to find a solution. This is already going on. Um, uh, it's a continuous 360 degree checkup program. Second, ramp down, shut down the operations. I think a lot of companies already done, went to an effective hibernation part of the companies, part of the operations already in this mood. Uh, the new working methods uh, elaborated um, and uh, the, the management uh, and the interaction with suppliers, with clients entered into this new way of working. Uh, liquidity, this is what we're facing after the one month uh, into this uh, crisis, at least in, in Europe. This is currently a top priority for managed companies to review the cash flow plans, the three months uh, year on year plans, um, definitely a, a unique setup for, for cash office. Uh, long run, uh, secure funding and government aid. Uh, the majority of these programs already on the table. These are not easy programs. There are a lot of uh, factors which you have to fulfill and keep an eye on that. Um, it's administrative, it's bureaucratic. Um, and you have to focus on not to waste time, uh, uh, double submission and so on. So it's, it's a lot of energy to make it right and secure the necessary funding. Um, and parallel to this, starting right now in the coming weeks and months should focus on the efficient restart, re-ramp up. Um, this is already a critical question, how you can step, uh, step by step or um, along different uh, uh, ideas, uh, get back to business normal or the new way of um, uh, the new normal, uh, how it's uh, achievable the best and most efficient way. And the number six is how you can emerge even stronger, providing more performance 
momentum boost, uh, uh, identifying opportunities and strategic considerations, what you should do different, what we can learn from the crisis, what we can learn from the new way, the new normal, the, um, uh, the, the change, the uh, pattern of demand, um, and other efficient solutions uh, based on digitalization uh, impacts. Um, all of this should be considered to, to manage in the so-called uh, control room or emergency room or operational center. We believe that companies already set up this room or this task force already weeks ago and they're working pretty uh, well. Four key elements they should focus on. First of all, organization and management itself and the company. Second, action tracking. Third, task force. And the communication is the fourth. Communication is, is elementary inside and outside. And having the right uh, flow of communication is essential. Task force should be dedicated to critical uh, areas uh, with dedicated uh, uh, capacities. And for example, as I mentioned before, the ramp up uh, task force, uh, but everywhere where we believe there is a, a, a bottleneck situation should be uh, a quick and agile solution for that. Uh, where we can get the information for that is the action tracking. Action tracking should be available for everybody, cloud-based or other solutions, and monitor daily based the KPIs to be able to react to the task force accordingly. Um, the people, the people in the companies, this is the last, last uh, element which I would like to highlight here. Uh, there is a huge stress in the organization. Uh, there is a huge uh, effect on the employees. Uh, there are some uh, very critical questions everywhere. Uh, uh, what's going to happen with my company? What's going to happen with my job? What's going to be, happen with my health? So it's an enormous stress. The people have fear. Um, or from the infections, um, the health situation, uh, the health service itself, uh, it, it, uh, it, uh, it's a very traumatic uh, position right now. And of course, in the long run, what's going to happen with my company? What's going to happen uh, with my job? Are we going to uh, have uh, jobs in the, in the future? And this creates a lot of uh, uh, room for actions and needed very direct management from uh, uh, the executives. So we need very clear decision-making power. Uh, making decisions under uncertainty needs very fast, transparent, and uh, and uh, uh, prioritized uh, uh, actions uh, need to be implemented well. Uh, even uh, unpopular measures like like Kurzarbeit, short-term uh, working, uh, uh, forced holidays, even of course uh, uh, headcount reduction should be done in a very uh, to the point uh, uh, way, and it's always supported with clear and open communication. Um, in this in this sense, we are talking about people management as well and we should focus on how the people work, so focus on work organization and focus on behavior and motivation. Um, if you want to keep up the good uh, performance from home office, home office, from remote working and socially distanced working methods, we need to provide infrastructure, uh, uh, the means of communications, and of course, processes, procedures, how we should going to do this. And on the other hand, uh, behavior and, and motivation is key. So not just providing this infrastructure element, but also motivate, teach, and involve the people to use these uh, tools. I still remember the first uh, uh, Zoom and WebEx meetings with, uh, with clients. 60-70% uh, uh, of the people did not turn on the cameras and uh, did not participate actively really in these meetings. After one month in this new working method, it's almost 95% of the people actively uh, using the camera voice and, of course, interacting in a very solid way 
following the rules, the new rules of cooperation, how to use uh, these team routines efficiently and get the best out of the performance. We need for that motivation. We should learn from each other and get getting better day by day. So to sum it up, um, I, I see that uh, we all already uh, set up very good this emergency situation. Um, now uh, all of the companies uh, pretty clear on what does COVID means in the daily life. Um, besides all of the, un, uh, the questions which we are unable to, to answer, um, there is a new normal developing how we can work in this very stretched situation. Now is the step uh, starting forward, uh, uh, developing the new normal um, after COVID or uh, after uh, the pandemic uh, with COVID or uh, social distancing measures, how we can create a positive uh, working uh, environment, new methods of, of working in this so-called emergency mode. We should um, convert it to a new normal uh, mode and this new normal mode should be better um, than uh, the old one. Uh, it should be uh, create more opportunities and more efficient and uh, more impactful uh, employees in the companies. And uh, after stabilizing the situation, we should end up to a better new normal. Uh, after COVID, we will definitely live in a different world, but we believe it's going to be much better. So thank you very much for your attention, for the time and the opportunity to be here. And um, I don't know, Oliver, do you have any questions? Yes, please. First of all, thank you very much for your presentation and for the deep insights uh, we are uh, allowed here into your research of the past weeks and the scenario building of Roland Berger. It's very valuable content for all of our audience, I'm very sure. And um, I do have uh, two questions for you. Getting into the first one, it's about the supply chains. You had this beautiful slide um, depicting how supply chains will localize more in certain geographies. And looking at, um, <clears throat> looking at the CEE region, uh, but maybe especially um, uh, speaking to you uh, uh, in Budapest uh, with your um, view on the on the national uh, economies there. What do you think is some of the potential uh, that arises for local economies now to um, play a larger role in the supply chain again for the local markets uh, in the next uh, short to midterm phase to come, but also with potential to build a stronger export business? Uh, what areas, what, what um, industries do you, do you see as the um, highest potential here? Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Oliver, you see it, 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 uh, it's absolutely right. This is a huge question for the future. What's going to be the impact on the small economies? Uh, we are in the region, we're talking about really small economies dependent on the European or the global economies. There are some voices saying that, that it creates opportunities due to uh, near shoring and, and increasing the, the importance of the CE region. Um, we have seen in the early 90s a huge uh, uh, golden area for this, for this region. After joining the European Union, there's a huge investment uh, happening uh, all of the countries. But of course, due to the globalization, the lot of productions move to China. If we consider that uh, uh, the strategy could be in the future to build where you sell, um, there are some opportunities, uh, uh, every economy. Nevertheless, as a demand side of these countries, not so huge. So I, I, I would not be so uh, sudden running to this decision that it's an absolutely low hanging fruit for all of the economies. These countries, there is a lot of manufacturing, there is a lot of uh, automotive uh, sector, footprint locations we can, we can see here, uh, especially in, in, in Hungary, it's a very interesting question. Uh, but the value added uh, activities 
not just the manufacturing, but the so-called uh, white color uh, outsourced uh, uh, solutions could be a, an opportunity here for strengthening the position. Nevertheless, um, as it's a global phenomenon that everybody is trying to localize, um, I believe that uh, uh, the small economies are going to be in a very tough position and they have to fight every investment in the future to cover uh, the impacts of the COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you, Fujin, uh, for your insight on that. Um, this uh, also leads me to the second question um, where it, I would like to ask you a little bit about um, innovation and digitization uh, potentials because the economies, as you just described them, um, are a status quo, but we are already seeing a lot of um, new um, business potential, even, uh, uh, let's say, um, innovation processes being triggered by the uh, uh, operational emergency situation itself, but, but carrying some, some long-term business potential maybe inside. So if we look into innovation and digitization, and maybe uh, especially for the most suffering small and medium-sized uh, enterprises, um, I would like to discuss this topic with you from two ends. One end being, how do you think um, the governments should um, uh, support um, innovation and digitization through what kind of programs and in, in what industries would this be um, most um, um, uh, yeah, impactful? Sure, and, sure, sure, sure. And, and from a second uh, side, looking at it, how do you think uh, corporates in the CEE region can tap into, let's say, startup and 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 um, Mittelstand SME um, uh, scaled businesses uh, who might be able to develop uh, and digitize uh, quickly and under more pressure now. Um, so, how do you see the digitization and innovation processes around, especially SMEs, from these two perspectives, supporting it from the government side and making use of it from a corporate side? Well, uh, first of all, uh, digitalization, it, it's on the agenda uh, for years now. Uh, uh, we are in our region, uh, especially you mentioned SMEs, the, um, the Central European SMEs, not really in the position to, to forge uh, the digital behavior of the people. Uh, the large uh, global tech companies creating really the trends um, in the digital uh, world. But COVID-19 uh, did a huge impact in, in digitalization. Um, I, I believe that, uh, that in the last couple of weeks happened more digital uh, initiatives implemented than in the last years uh, together. Uh, companies moved uh, to full uh, digital uh, processes and I'm not, not just talking about uh, some fancy home office uh, situations but also how the people interact uh, between companies, intercompany uh, relations, uh, contracting agreements, uh, uh, even deliveries payments, um, these are huge impacts on the global uh, uh, economy and, uh, and this can be very profitable for SMEs. Currently, uh, small companies forced to move towards digitalization, which, 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 which didn't happen in the past years. Uh, just consider contactless payments that uh, up to now it was so convenient just to uh, use uh, cash or transfers, uh, was, uh, money transfer was not uh, really uh, uh, preferred in this, in this section. Currently, uh, for a lot of sales and a lot of deliveries, uh, there is only the feasible way is contactless payments uh, during cards, during other new fintech solutions can be provided. So I believe that, that um, digitalization is led by not the technology itself, I think it's given. There are more and more uh, solutions that we can even imagine. It's existing and already proven uh, to be used. 
there are good use cases. The major bottleneck of digitalization is of course the customer behavior, the user behavior, which should be switched uh, into this manner. And I think the COVID uh, impact on this digitalization behavior is so huge that the majority of the people will not go back to the traditional routines before the crisis, but they will adapt and even think further and move further into this direction. So I think SMEs, they have a huge opportunity here to move on. Um, the other question which you raised here is the role of the government. Um, um, and I think, um, of course, all the support and programs should be there and uh, should support and even regulatory uh, framework should be created to support um, the digitalization. Uh, but if you allow me, I just would like to close with uh, one example from the Hungarian government on, uh, on uh, research and development uh, initiatives, um, uh, which uh, has been announced last week, that uh, a special support uh, uh, designed and created, not for the low-income uh, people, but uh, especially targeted the people in the research and development areas, which people are usually um, uh, not so poor uh, uh, paid, that they should not be uh, decreased or released. Um, they get a special fund and, uh, and uh, half or even the full salary or depending on the salary size could be refinanced by this governmental fund. And I think this is a very good initiative uh, of course, we should focus on uh, the poorest people. We should help to each, each, each other and help everybody who need financial help, like in the tourism, like in the uh, transportation sector, like in the, the totally uh, impact uh, uh, sectors. But if we have some focus on this, uh, this special segment of, uh, of uh, research and development people, we can save a lot of jobs and it will be enormous helpful in the recovery and the ramp up to the new economy living in the new way of working.